In this video, I will take one example to show you the mathematics of how PCA reduce dimension. Here, I will only go through step 1 and step 2. Step 3 to step 5 can be found in subsequent videos. So in this example, I'll be using this bivariate data. I have a sample size of 10 and there are two variables. In this case, I call them x1 star and x2 star. Let's first construct a scatter plot to see how the data is distributed, whether there is high redundancy in the data set or low redundancy. Then we will also know whether PCA can help in reducing the number of dimensions from two to maybe just one. So there's a possibility that this bivariate data can become a univariate data. So here I've already input my data set into Minitab. Now let me create the scatter plot. I'm going to use x2 star as the y variable and x1 star as the x variable. I would also like to label the points so that I know which data point belongs to which data. So I go to data label and choose the row number and I click OK. So I now have a scatter plot, but the size looks a bit off. So I'm going to make it square by right click and edit figure region. And I'm going to change this to 100. So in this scatter plot, I can see that the first data pair is here. The second data pair is here. The third data pair is here and so on and so forth. Now it seems to me that this data set is positively correlated. Let me first um, find the correlation. So I'm going to go to stat, basic stats, correlation, to find the correlation between x1 star and x2 star. So correlation value is 0 0.926, which tells me that the bivariate data has a strong positive correlation. So there's a good chance that PCA can help me to reduce this bivariate data to a univariate data. Furthermore, if I were to look at the structure of the covariance, perhaps maybe if I try to draw an ellipse, you can see that the axis of the maximum variance is around here. And hence, this becomes my PC1. And PC2, which is perpendicular to PC1, should be around here. And if this variability captured is very low, it is likely that I can drop it and only retain PC1. So for the first two steps, what I'm going to do is to try to find the covariance matrix that will represent this covariance structure. But as you can tell, this data set it has a center that is around perhaps here. So what we like to do is try to decenter this data set first by adjusting or shifting this data set so that the center will be at zero. So let me first compute the mean of the first variable as well as the mean of the second variable. So you can use your calculator or you can use Excel or you can use Minitab and you can calculate that the mean of the first variable is actually 1.81 and the mean of the second variable is actually 1.91 so this bivariate data set has a mean vector that is 1.81 1.91 So to recenter the data set, I'm now going to subtract the mean from the corresponding data. So for this data 2.5, I'm going to subtract its mean of 1.81. This will give me 0 0.69. And for this data 2.5, I'm going to subtract its mean of 1.91, which will give me 0 0.49. I'll do the same for the next data pair. I'm going to take 0 0.5, 0 0.7, subtract the mean vector. This gives me negative 1.31 and negative 1.21. So keep doing that.
So this data set which has been recentered, I call the first variable x1 without the star and the second variable x2 without the star. So this data set has been recentered such that the center is at zero. You can reconstruct the scatter plot to take a look. So I've input the recentered data into my mini tab because I just want to create the scatter plot to make sure or just to take a look that um, it has been recentered such that the center is at zero. So if you can see, the center is now at zero. So we shall now use this recentered data set to find the covariance matrix. So I'm going to write out the data matrix X now. So this data matrix should be of size 10 by 2 because it has 10 rows of data and two columns of variables. So the first data pair will be 0 0.69 and 0 0.49. The second data pair is minus 1.31, minus 1.21. Third data pair is 0 0.39, 0 0.99, and so on and so forth. And then the last data pair is negative 0 0.71 and negative 1.01. So just to remind you that this data set, which is adjusted or recentered, will now be centered around 0. So the means will be 0, meaning the mean vector will be at 0. So step one is complete. Now let's go to step two, where we can now investigate the covariance structure of the data set by computing the covariance matrix C. So we call that the formula for finding the covariance matrix C is this. But since we have recentered the data set such that the mean will be at zero, so these two vectors is now at zero, zero, and hence they will disappear and you are only left with this formula. So let's find the covariance matrix C which is to take 1 over the sample size which is 10 minus 1 multiply to the transpose of the data matrix. I have no space so I'm going to write the rest as dot 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 and then multiply to the data matrix. So we have here the data matrix X, which is of size 10 by 2. And after transpose, this will be of size 2 by 10. So a 2 by 10 matrix multiplied to a 10 by 2 matrix. Ultimately, my covariance matrix will be 1 over 9 of a 2 by 2 matrix. So you can compute this by hand by doing matrix multiplication, where you will take the first row and multiply to the first column in order to get this number here. And then second row, multiply to the first column to get this number here, and so on and so forth. Or you can, like me, use mini tab to help you do the job. So I'm going to go stats, basic stats, and you can see covariance here. So I want to find the covariance between x1 and x2. It doesn't matter whether you use the original data set or the recentered data set because what happens is they are just a shifting of each other. Just make sure that if you use this x1, you should use this x2 or if you use this x1 star, you should be using x2 star. So I have the covariance numbers here which I'm now going to copy into my slide. Now remember that even though this value here is empty, I know that a covariance matrix must be symmetric. So this number and this number should be the same. So with this covariance matrix, I can now use eigenvalue eigenvector analysis to find the direction where the axis of maximum variability is. Now note that here we are using the covariance matrix to perform PCA. This is possible because this data set seems to have the same scale or same unit for both variables. In the event that you have data set which does not have the same scale or does not have the same unit, then it is better that the data to be standardized. 
and if that is so then C will now become the correlation matrix and since X data has been standardized it is now replaced by Z